on this episode of Conversations with Rich Bennett. Somebody said, who even knows their neighbors anymore? And I was like, I know every single one of my neighbors and they know me and they know my my dog (laughs) and the kids that are outside pet my dog and run up to my dog and they'll come knock on my door just to pet my dog. They know my son's name. You know what I mean? Like they know everything like and I'm a person in recovery and I get to know the people around me now because I understand that everybody might be struggling with something, so why not be nice? Mm -hmm. And that's very much a byproduct of being a person in recovery who has been loved and supported by people I did not know, and knowing that I have to be an active part of my local community. like. And that's the thing, and that's what causes closed-mindedness in a community, not being an active part of your actual exactly. community, right? Yes. Like, So it's not just important for people in recovery to be connected to their community. It's important for the community at large to be connected mm-hmm. to everybody around them so they get to know what's actually going on and who's actually impacted by the thing that might offend them or whatever it is, you know? Coming to you from the Freedom Federal Credit Union Studios, Harford County Living presents Conversations with Rich Bennett. Come on, you're faster than me. Guys, yeah. we've been I together. Oh, yeah. it's 24th and 13th. Oh, man, you already <laughs> said it. I was going to ask her if she remembered the date. Sitting here uh, with Wendy, she had an idea. Well, she always has ideas. So we have a full table, five of us. We're going to go around the table where everybody introduce themselves, and then Wendy's going to take charge. Hi, I'm Wendy from Rage Against Addiction. Hi, I'm Sean Partain, and I work for Addiction Connections Resource. Uh, I'm Elliot Slattery. I work for Achieve Behavioral Health. Phil Hosmer, Executive Director of Nature Works. So today we're gathered um, because we want to talk about Recovery Month. September is National Recovery Month, and Hartford County always takes some time to celebrate celebrate those in recovery. And with um, the national, going along with, I guess, the national guidelines this year is uh, the art of recovery. Mm -hmm. So we're going to we're going to kind of try to do a little play on that um, within our community. And then we also have some of our nonprofits and treatment centers uh, here today to talk about what they're going to be doing in Hartford County during the month of September. And I'm going to let Sean kind of kick it off because she's been the lead on this and collecting all that data from everybody around town um so starting in august 30 or august 31st um which august is international overdose awareness month and then the august 31st is overdose awareness day um voices of hope is going to be doing a visual and um, then that's gonna kick off the following month month which is september which is national recovery month um, and the first event in September is going to be Ripkin's Family Recovery Night, and that's going to be hosted by Ashley Addiction Treatment and Achieve Behavioral Health. Um, and then following that next day is um, the Big Softball for Sobriety. Um, that's been going on for a little bit it's with ACR. Um, and we split it up this year. It's going to be family friendly on the 7th, and then we're going to do a competitive day on the 14th to allow more participants. And then after that, we got Rage Bingo, which has also been going on for a really long time. It's a really good time on September 15th. And then after that, we have um, the special reunion for Ashley. You don't have to be an alumni in order to attend. It's a great event on campus. Their campus is beautiful. That will be September 21st. And then after that, Nationally, um, peer professionals and and professionals working in this field are recognized on September 20th, um, and we encourage everybody for that day to wear purple, which is um, the recovery color. And right after that next day is rest and recharge, um, and that's with NatureWorks. And that's actually an event they do each month on the third Saturday. It's a free event for people that are working in the field to really, you know, reset and get out in the nature. Um, But this one's going to be specifically for those working in the recovery field. Um, And then we also are encouraging everybody in the county to participate in something that's been going on for about um, maybe seven years, five, seven years. 
and that is to put purple lights out yes. in your front yard. Um, the town of Bel Air and I think um, Havity Grace has participated as well, um, have been a part of putting out purple lights and then also like the health department and other organizations have donated lights to the towns to really recognize like those who support people in recovery. And I think it's been a really good hit in the towns, but I really wanna see this year, um, people in our community really getting involved. Mm -hmm. I know how much that our community has been affected by um, substance use. And I know that we have so many supporters, but like, let's let them see that by putting out those lights in your front yard, um, even changing out your light bulb in your, um, like front the front door. of your porch, front yeah. door. And you can get those on Amazon. You can reach out to the health department. I'm sure they'd be more than willing to provide some lights for you. Um, but really, let's support that. And if you guys have any questions about the events that I just listed, one place you can go to, um, ACR, <laughs> I put all of the events on our calendar for the month. And I link each organization's website so that you can sign up or donate. Um, so you can go to acrhelps.org um, to our event page. One thing of those purple lights, those of you listening, don't make the mistake of getting a black light. Because <laughs> a black light looks purple, but it's not the same. I found the easiest thing to do was just get the smart LED bulb. Okay. Because you can change colors, and this way you're not changing the light bulb every time for whether it be purple, blue, green. You don't want the red one out there. Um, you know, and everything else. If you're not too sure, like I know ACR has like the spotlights and they have like the remote. The spotlight? Yeah, like we have the spotlights from Amazon and like you can change the color. And so you you know you have purple in that yeah. batch. <laughs> so. And it's, uh, it's not for the Ravens. It's for recovery month. But because season, you know, it is football season, everybody should have purple lights anyways. I feel like they end up getting like... You know, people keep them up for Ravens afterwards, uh -huh. so it's like double use. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> right. And wear purple. What's the day to wear purple? Day to wear purple will be September 20th, which is like professional, um, like people working in the field professional okay. day. Okay. Well, I guess, um, Elliot, you can tell us about what's going on first because you are the first event of September and uh, what's happening at Ripkins Stadium. So um, we've been working with the people who work for the Iron Birds to create a recovery month event for everybody. Um, so I think normal tickets are 12, 13, maybe 15 bucks, but for an extra charge of 18 to 20 bucks, um, donations will be gathered and they'll go to rage against addiction Yay, um we've worked you. with ashley to put on this event to help like pay for the event and everything so it's going to be recovery night so a lot of stuff going on there is going to be about recovery we're going to have an old timer in recovery throw out the first pitch we're going to have the serenity prayer before the national anthem it's going to be a real fun event um they're going to celebrate recovery on the field, and some of our rock stars in recovery will be able to run the bases, like, at the beginning of the game, and we'll announce their clean time, and it's going to be pretty fun. It's a whole orchestrated thing. So um, we haven't done all the planning yet, so I don't know who some of these people will be. I'm supposed to get together with Ashley today or next week to figure that out. The name might change, all kinds of stuff. We just kind of said what we had together so far right now, but... Those are all the things we get in that day. Um, there's a couple more, I think. We'll have a recovery announcer in the stadium who will like support the other announcers. Oh, wow. um, it'll, it's gonna be real fun. We, we'll have a bunch of tables for some of the local community recovery partners that will be there. Um, so people will get a lot of information about what's going on and what they could do to support loved ones into getting into recovery, so. It's so gonna, we're gonna, you're going to have resource tables there? Yep, we're so going to have we resource have, tables there. We can there. have people yep. like Rage or other... Yep, okay. yep. I think we're going to have Rage, ACR, Ashley, us, and I think we get one or two more tables and okay. we'll figure out kind of how we want to do those. But right. I'm thinking like nonprofits or like big support that anybody could reach out to type of um, tables. So 
Okay. Can mm-hmm. you can you tell us a little bit about Achieve for our listeners who aren't familiar? Yeah. Um, so Achieve Behavioral Health is a local treatment facility that I run, and what we do is so when people are looking for help, there's a couple things they get asked right away, right? So most people will need to enter detox for what they're going through, which will help curb any withdrawals that happen from whatever substance uh, they are using. Then they'll end up going to either residential or some kind of PHP-based setting for treatment. What's PHP for our listeners? So PHP means partial hospitalization, which is a term that's, like, not really what it is, you know? It's just kind of what um, the state and everybody created to call it. What it really is, it's a six-hour day of clinical services, right? Um, And this normally happens every day for your first, like, 28 to 45-ish days, right? Um, It's strongly recommended because... In early recovery, we kind of have to relearn how to live life without substances Mm -hmm. in us, right? Um, So we do that. We also have an IOP program, which is considered intensive outpatient, which means it's more hours than standard outpatient. It's normally two and a half, three hours, um, four nights a week. So this kind of helps people if they have to work during the day to still be involved in some kind of clinical services. Um, This is also strongly encouraged if you're unable to do residential or PHP um, because it just, like I said, it helps us get acclimated to living life in recovery. Um, We work with a lot of local sober livings if people need housing and things like that. So then another thing I'll say, too, that will help educate the listeners. So if I'm a person out there struggling, I'm like, hey, I need help. A couple things that come into place are what kind of insurance do you have? Because local providers, that's kind of how they get paid to provide these services, right? Mm -hmm. So there's generally a difference between somebody who might have (laughs) private insurance or state insurance or no insurance at all, right? So, So there's like a difference, right? So some places only accept private insurance. We accept Medicaid. So we're geared more toward people who really need to rebuild their life in some capacity, right? We help people get insurance who don't have it, so we also accept people who have no insurance at all um, and help them get set up so that afterwards they're able to participate in other services, right? And get, like, medications they may need Mm -hmm. and get the support they might need clinically. And we try to help get the ball rolling. A A lot of the patients we get come from either, um being unhoused or come from jails or come from situations that aren't so great and we kind of pride ourselves in making sure they have everything they need a lot of our patients come in and don't have any clothes we have a lot of donations that we receive so people end up leaving with everything they need clothes food that kind of stuff, we're able to support people in getting all those things. And we work a lot with the nonprofits like ACR, RAGE, et cetera, to like help kind of gather these things. Um, we also have men's programming and women's programming that are separate. Um, so I'm a strong believer in gender-specific care. I think that sometimes it's traumatic for women to be around men in treatment and mm-hmm. sometimes it's just not beneficial for men to to like have to share vulnerable things in a group that's co-ed so we've kind of created that space where they can be separate and have their own unique treatment experiences also helps to build camaraderie so that when they leave they're able to engage with with each other a little bit better and have closer knit relationships which having that sense of Um, companionship in early recovery and camaraderie is I believe one of the most important things people can have that have people surrounding them supporting them um, and just building a little team of people who are on the same mission which is to achieve recovery you mentioned clues a Mm -hmm. lot of people come there for no clues Mm -hmm. Do you guys do like clothes drives or how do you get the clothes that you need? Yeah, so luckily, um, so when I got clean almost 12 years ago, Mm. I had nothing, right? So I really kind of make it a point to know who's able to help provide some of these things, right? Okay. So pretty much how I do it is me and some of my staff just post on Facebook and a lot of people end up coming up and 
giving us whatever it is right. we need, right? So, and we get real specific, you know? We don't have necessarily a big enough space to hold, like, tons of donations. That was going to so be we, my next question. So we yeah. get very specific with what we need, right? Like, if we have a lot of large shirts, but we need some extra larges, we might yeah. say, we need extra large shirts. And then once enough people say, hey, I'm going to bring some by, we'll just delete the post so that we don't get overran by right. donations, you, right? Do you know that um, Daughter's House has a closet? Yes. Yeah, so, so Rachel ever, told us okay. for the women's. Yeah. Yep, so Rachel told us for the women. Rachel is... Uh, is she the director? She's over the there? program director. Program director of Rage, and she's helping us a lot with creating our women's programming. Mm -hmm. What we did for these gender-specific programs is we took some of the rock stars in the local community that represent men's or women's, and we had them help us create what's going to be the best model for these gender-specific type programs, okay. right? Like, the same example is... A lot of the local sober livings, there's not many co-ed ones. They're either men's sober livings, we, women's yeah. sober livings. So we use some of the people involved in those to be like, if you could make a treatment model that works specifically for the people that come into your sober livings, how would you have it structured? So we have like meetings every week where they sit around a table together and we say, hey, we're doing this. What if we did this? Hey, we think this would set them up to get to where they need to be when they reach the next level. So we kind of pride ourselves in that collaboration also, which I think is super important for treatment to work right. with the outside partners and get advice because I believe treatment should operate in the same way that I think recovery should operate, right? Like when I get clean, they tell me to ask for suggestions, mm -hmm. to listen to what other people have to say, People have been around longer than me, and they help give me the guidance I need to get to the next level, right? right. So why shouldn't a treatment center operate in the same, same way, way yeah. as recovery actually works? And what I think that does is it infuses the spirit of recovery. And it spills over. Exactly. Yeah. Into the program itself. And guess what? The patients in there also get to know the community partners mm -hmm. that exist outside of there that they're going to see when they leave. And what this does is it makes them comfortable when they get to the next place so they're not, like, afraid of what it's going to be like or anything like that. They already know what it's going to be like, and they already know the faces that they're going to see on the other side. So I think this is also very beneficial to the patients that we see. So. And how long have you guys been around? So we've only been around, like, a year and a half, almost okay. a year and a half. Um but I've been working in treatment a long time. I've been a lot of places. I've, I've done practically every job you can do in a treatment center outside of being a clinician. And um, like I said, I've been active in recovery a long time. Right. So I've seen some of the missing gaps. And that's why when we were making this, I tried to like make it as spirited Mm -hmm. for toward recovery is humanly possible you know wrapped around like state guidelines and stuff like that so you kind of have to stay in those boxes now are you guys a 501c3 no we are a private business but okay yeah and there were just have been a lot more like mandates if we were a 501c3 um so we had it funded and then we operated it that way would, but there's nothing saying you can't start a foundation. Right. Either, so, so we're thinking about that in the future, but we're trying to utilize. Right now, yeah, build. Yeah, we're trying or to utilize. Or they can just support the ones that already. Well, that's which, true which is too. essentially what we're doing right now. Yeah. So yeah, what we do sorry. is like we we give charitable donations to a lot of local nonprofits that we know are helping everybody. Yeah. You know, so we kind of like just do that wisely and just make sure we trust the people that we're donating to and you already got one location now so we have our main location here in Bel Air and I guess I could say this because we already told our team so we're opening up in North Carolina really um, yeah so North Carolina used to not have any substance use treatment they for people on Medicaid or without insurance, right? This mm -hmm. year, they just changed their state's policies to allow Medicaid to cover substance use disorder treatment. So, and um, one of our key players um, at Achieve is housed in North Carolina. So they told us about this and we kind of took action because we want to be on the front lines of helping those communities Good. down there get better.
We also That's have a awesome. location in Towson. We have a location in Baltimore City okay. also. Okay. It's kind of a different program. It's considered right. a 3.1, which is low intensity residential treatment. Um, and that program's also doing very well. That's for men. Um, it's 15 beds. Um, the staff down there are all rock stars. And it's a pretty amazing program to really help guys get on their feet. That's a nine month to a year program. Wow. Um, so it really helps guys who really need that additional mm -hmm. support for longer term get back on their feet. Yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. So if anybody, I mean, in, in honor of recovery in general, if anybody needed to reach out to you guys, how would they do that? Yeah, so um, I'm going to say our main office <laughs> number. So you can call the main line. We have the best admissions people I could possibly imagine ever. They are rays <laughs> of sunshine, and they greet people with, like, extreme kindness and respect and Aww. they are hilarious too um that's olivia and robbie Sounds like me <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's olivia and robbie so shout out to them i always give them praise every single day um so our main line is 443-464-1009 i'll say it again 443-464-1009 and anybody can call there anytime somebody will answer the phone it's connected to some people's mm -hmm. cell phones for after hours so no one will ever not get the attention they need because we also understand the window of opportunity for someone to actually seek help is very small. Mm -hmm. So the minute that they want that help, we want them to be able to get it. Right. And it doesn't really matter what kind of insurance you have or anything like that. If you call that number, we'll figure out what place will accept you, talk to you about them. I take, we take our admissions people, our case managers, everybody to tour other facilities that we're trying to work oh, wow. with so that we can kind of have a firsthand view of what it actually looks like. And so we can know if we actually trust them to do the work they're supposed to do or not. So um, I keep the staff pretty active and up to date on all of that. So you don't have to worry about them just throwing you to the right. wind. We've seen the places we're sending you to in person and we'll tell you all the pros and cons of every place you might be considering so yeah mm. that's good mm -hmm. awesome and then the day after that you can play softball yes right so um softball for sobriety has been going on for quite some time now um we've grown the event so much that we split the family friendly day which is open to people that just enjoy playing softball versus the competitive day which is the following week of people that play every single day of like the year so you don't want to be in that if you're like me and you're athletic but not like that athletic <laughs> um and so softball for sobriety um we grew it a little bit last year where we had a volleyball net cornhole um a bunch of yard games for participants that were um watching it, you don't have to be playing softball to attend we have resource tables and we also have food trucks, um, mocktail uh, bar. Mocktail I don't want to say bar, yeah. but a mocktail drink trailer. <laughs> um, and other community um, organizations with their tables and then just other um, free items. Like we usually cover the food. Um, the mocktails usually are free. Um, and people rant and rave about this event. So I. Feel really Last year was really good. Thank um, you. <laughs> their food was really good. I think you had, I don't we know. We had your... glizzy hot dogs? That Something. Was... Yeah. yeah, it was really good. And then the mocktails as well. Yeah. So that was fun. This year we have this Old Line coming old. back. This, you this, year, this year we have Old Line barbecue coming back. Oh, we had line. him a couple okay. years ago. Um, we were able to schedule him they this year. So we'll have him. Um, and then for competitive day, we have the... I think they're called the food guys and they um, cook out for the softball fields typically so we brought them in for the competitive day and they'll be ser serving like um, hot dogs and hamburgers <laughs> and chips and um, drinks and stuff like that. Now, now this event um, is the main fundraiser for ACR. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So tell us a little bit about like you know the why and, and what and those of who don't know about ACR give like a little plug about our ad addiction connection resources. So we are a 501 C3. So we operate on grant funds and fundraising. 
donations, essentially. So yeah. that's why we do and this big <laughs> and donations. Yes. So yeah. that's why we do this fundraiser. Um, and you know, we've grown. We've been in operations for 23 years. I think that's when we first got our 501c3. Um, and you know, we work individually with clients that are seeking help to navigate the treatment field. Um, we work with everybody in the community and we offer peer support for each individual, whether that's a family member or a individual who's actually seeking the care. Um, like Elliot said, there's gaps. There's always been gaps mm -hmm. and there probably always will be, unfortunately. Um, you know, but ACR's goal is to remove those barriers, um, whatever that may look like. And... <clears throat> um, hopefully put us out of business one day is the goal. <laughs> well, I mean, and they, ACR is um, really instrumental in getting a lot of our ladies into the houses. So when you come into sober living, you don't necessarily, you know, you might have come from treatment or IOP, like Elliot was saying, and then they don't have any funds. So uh, we have our ladies reach out immediately to ACR and they cover that initial cost for them to get in, which is, you know, without it, they wouldn't be able to do it. And then without it, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So we kind of all piggyback off of each other. And I really think that that's why it's really important for the community to understand um, recovery month is about all of the things that create recovery in a community from treatment to funding to housing and then we're going to talk about some other things as well um, and if somebody wanted to play on either the family friendly team or the competitive team how would they how would they contact you to do that yeah so we have flyers out on our Facebook which is addiction connections resource or our Instagram and there's a link in the bio on Instagram um, ACR helps and then also my email is s partain p-a-r-t-a-i-n at acrhelps.org um, and you can reach out to me and I can share that link with you as well and I think rage against addiction well I know we're gonna have a team so what happens is that the community will each, I guess, not only nonprofit, but like Rage Against Addiction will have a team. And then Ashley Treatment will have a team. We have a team. Achieve will have a team. So you can actually play on a team of, of your choice, I yeah. guess. So if you don't have a team, you can sign up as an individual and then we can add you to a team. Um, there is a lot of um, organizations that have teams, but then there's also um, community, like just individuals that are looking to play um, and get on the fund that just you know create a team and then there's also um, other organizations outside of like the recovery community for example we have Anderson um, Buick I guess yeah, yeah it used to be Boyles but mm -hmm. now they're Anderson so we have them um, coming back again and other um, we have Highmark I believe is one of them so we have other organizations as well that put together teams so it, it don't crack on me. Okay. Because uh, I don't know what the rules are, but let's say somebody cannot run the bases that well. Mm -hmm. Can they hit the ball and have somebody run for them? That's not a silly question. So, okay. yes, we do allow. I you're going to make fun of me. No. I wasn't talking about for me, though. <laughs> yeah. So, for example, my son is 12. He's almost 13. He'll play. He'll hit. And somebody else will run for him if he doesn't, you know, feel like running or can't run. Um, so that does happen. And, um, yeah. I never knew that. Yeah. Good question. That is a good question. And, you didn't and make fun we of me. follow the <laughs> ACA softball rules, if Hello. anybody's familiar. Yeah, I don't, I have other people that play softball more regularly help me with the planning of the rules and the umps and all that. Slow um, pitch or fast pitch? I think it's slow pitch. Okay. Um, don't quote me. It's slow. <laughs> it's slow. It's slow. And you can only hit one home run. I never played softball you get, in what? school. You only get one home run because we got, or like, is it each person or each team? Because we got, we hit a couple home runs last year. And, and they don't count? Don't count it. I don't know. And the family. That's like the like, ACA rules. It's like limited. Every home run after one counts as a double. Huh. Huh. Really? Okay, yeah. well, if you want to look up those <laughs> rules and you're interested, it's what, <laughs> AC, what is it? ACRhelps.org. Okay, but um, I'm saying if you want to look up the rules to the game. where Oh, ACA um, softball <laughs> rules, but they're a little bit more lenient. We put out rules specifically for our event. 
um, that are sent out to the teams prior. And then, like, for family day, there's, like, double home base. And then for competitive day, it's just one home base. There's a lot. Um, but if you guys are interested, just reach out to me individually. And the date for the competitive is? The 14th, the 14th. of September, so, so we, the following Saturday. So we got the Ripkins on the 6th. The 7th is family day. The 14th is our softball competitive day. And then that takes us into uh, the Rage Bingo, which mm -hmm. is going to be Sunday, September 15th. And we have... Um, you know other organizations and businesses that donate uh, raffle baskets so it's a basket bingo it's it's fun it is at the american legion in bel-air and if you want more information about that one you can just go to the rage website which is uh, rageagainstaddiction.org and you can get your tickets there and and that should be that's always fun and wendy what does rage do Rage Against Addiction is a nonprofit organization that provides awareness and support to anyone that struggles from drug and or alcohol abuse, including the families. We have a few small programs. Um, we have RAA's ABC, which is uh, after baby care. So we provide postpartum care packages to new moms in recovery, which is a, a mini baby shower, I like to call it. It's like a predetermined checklist. So, you know, they get to, they usually pick everything, but they get to pick like diaper bag. And if it's, you know, gender specific, you know, blankets or clothing and, you know, some, some necessities like uh, diapers and just, you know, healthcare kit and, and, a, and a special item for, for new moms as well. We want them to feel like loved because a lot of times they are overwhelmed and they don't have what they need. So that's a near and dear to our heart. We love when we're able to help somebody with that. You're listening to Conversations with Rich Bennett. We'll be right back. Let's take a little break here so I can tell you about an amazing nonprofit, Rage Against Addiction. It's a nonprofit organization dedicated to connecting addicts and their families with the resources they need to find a path to recovery that will enable them to lead happy, healthy lives. And the team is simply amazing. Everything they do is amazing. From treatment resources and sober living to family services and grief support, Rage Against Addiction strives to provide programs that follow the addict and the family through the recovery process. Daughter's House is designed to assist women who are transitioning from substance abuse treatment to recovery and includes two sober living houses, Daughter's House and Sister House. Rage Club is designed for children who are impacted by substance abuse disorder. In partnership with Ashley Addictions Family Wellness Program, this group meets several times a year and meetings include counselor-led discussions and fun activities. Halo, How to Live Without Our Addicted Loved One, is an online grief support group specifically for those that have lost loved ones to substance abuse. This is a safe and private supportive environment, and RAA ABC, or Rage Against Addiction After Baby Care, empowering new moms in early recovery with postpartum care packages for mother and baby. Items are selected from a predetermined checklist for qualifying families. This is everything that Rage Against Addiction offers. Like I said, phenomenal nonprofit, great organization. Go to Rage Against Addiction. Dot org. Again, that's rageagainstaddiction.org, and feel free to make a donation while you're there. Um, but our main program is our Daughter's House program, which is sober living for women. We have three houses in Harford County, and we house about 20 women at a time. We're usually full. Um, we tend to, to run on a wait list, um, and then, you know, we're, we're going to maybe try to finagle getting another house at some point so we can, you know, support the community a little bit more. But that's that's a process, and that's why um, the nonprofits need the donations and the fundraising and that kind of stuff. So you can always go on our website, and we have a wish list. You can buy from Amazon, and it gets sent directly to one of our houses. So any kind of needs that we have, because we provide all of the cleaning supplies, toilet paper, paper towels, and that kind of stuff, that's that's a big help. Drug tests are very expensive as well, running a recovery house. So, you know, any, any, any way that you can help um, support these organizations, uh, the money is well spent, I will tell you that much. And I'll say something cool. So 
when I first got clean in 2012, but it was 2013 when I went to my sober living, ACR funded my sober living, right? So ACR is part of why I'm here, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And then I'll say another thing. My fiance went through Rage Against Addiction. Mm. Mm -hmm. So Rage Against Addiction mm. is the reason that she's here. Wow. And we have a little baby named Elijah Brave and... He wouldn't be oh, here if both of these party. things know, wouldn't be here. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So apparently my fiance was a participant of ACR, too. So, no, <laughs> well, she, she will not care. Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to name her. But, yeah, no, but that is actually how we piggyback off of each other. It, it is a daily process. You know, someone will call to get into sober living. So they, then they reach out to ACR to get funded or ACR gets them into the treatment, which ultimately gets them to the, the sober living house. And because of this, there is just this really large network, like you were saying, Elliot, how everybody kind of like is constantly interacting with each other. So there's this comfortableness. Mm -hmm. Is that a word? Comfortableness about you said it, our so community. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm owning and now it. Is. <laughs> I'm owning it. So yeah, and it, it, it is, it's really, it's awesome. It's yeah. a very awesome community. And the thing is, if all you guys, you, know, you always hear the phrase, you, know, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. In the recovery circle, you see that all the time. Yeah. Because you guys are always looking out for each other. And the, the people that are going through recovery, you're helping them. Whether, I mean, I've seen you at a couple different places, you know, Sean, working-wise. And, oh, okay. and I, I see like, that with <laughs> a lot of people in the recovery world. Yeah. But it seems like they're always going to the same groups and they're helping the other people in recovery. Yes. I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've worked, like, a lot with Wendy and, like, mm -hmm. the ABC program when I was at the health department because of, like, the specific demographic I was working with there and then like, well that's how know. I found out about Wendy is okay. when you were at the health oh, department yeah. okay. okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then like yeah when I went to um, ACR like we're you know my population mm -hmm. of people that I specifically work with is grown um, and you know I work really closely with Rage still and and Elliot and you know now we're seeing a lot from um, nature works and um, and, like, I really like how we're flexible as a community because, like, mm -hmm. ACR initially, there was not a lot of medicated facilities. So, like, that was our primary focus was treatment. And then we've, like, evolved and grown to, like, where the need is. So that, that's what I really appreciate about yeah. the recovery community. Yeah. And I feel like we're, like, a bunch of, I don't want to use this analogy, but I'm going to because I have nothing else for it. Like, brothers and sisters, like, you don't mess with no, no, that's good. It's a problem. It's, 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 and that's exactly, and that's exactly we fight, why. We fight, but we also like. I make fun of Sean at least once a yeah, week. Yeah, he's allowed to make fun of me, but nobody else is allowed to make fun of him unless. There's a me. lot of people that use that term. You hear it in the military. You hear it the police. It's a brotherhood and a sisterhood. And yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Yep, yeah. it's a network, and yeah. for sure, Family. yeah. Yeah, and the beauty about it too is like so. Example, the reason I've been able to do everything I've been able to do in my life is because the spirit of recovery in Harford County filled me up when I first got here. And I hope that we keep injecting that into the people that come mm -hmm. here so that they can feel injecting. that gratitude too <laughs> and, and take action um, because that's what it is. It's like once you feel the love, you want to give the love. Yes. So what we're really doing is we're creating a community where people feel that love, and eventually they're going to be able to help us do this stuff. You You're know? creating a domino a share, effect like, for the good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to share, okay. like, I got sober also in, like, Harvard County. I was, like, a resident of Cecil County at the time. I'm from Prince George's County. But I got sober here in Harvard County, and, like, because of the established community here. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, I hear sometimes, like, people come in maybe new to the field or just, like, people in general try to, like, really tear down the community, but, like, if it wasn't for this community, like as a flaw, it, as many flaws as there is in any kind of situation, like I hold this community and like what we're doing. And I feel like Harford County has been a leading community for recovery. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't here, if this wasn't here, then like people would not get sober. People would no. be dying. Well, and yes, and it's it's a real problem that's not going to go away. Mm -hmm. That's for no. sure. And um, I just I want to like I want to introduce um, another person that's at the table, um, which is, is also um, really a big piece to the recovery community as well as having nonprofits that provide services in wellness. And we have um, Nature Works here today, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let him take it over and introduce himself. 
Thank you, Wendy. I appreciate it. I'm Phil Hosmer, and I'm with NatureWorks. We're based in Bel Air, and we are a nonprofit organization. And what we provide is nature therapy. So nature therapy is essentially helping people connect with nature using all of their senses in a very mindful way. So nature is now an ally for their mental and behavioral health, another tool in their self-care toolkit. So when they're going through recovery and they, they face all the challenges that are involved in recovery, nature can be another way they can feel better, support their mental behavioral health. So we're teaching self-care skills, essentially. And we work with about eight different treatment centers in Central Maryland, including several here in Hartford County. And what we've learned in our work with patients is that it's really hard. It's hard work, right, to, 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 to move through the recovery process. And it's an ongoing process. And the people who do the work, like everybody at this table, it's hard on us, too. Right? There's a toll that happens when you are constantly supporting others, right? You're pouring yourself out for that person. You're also being empathetic to that person, and you're listening very intently to that person's story so you can better treat and support them. And in that process, we can all suffer from burnout. It's a real thing. Um, and unfortunately, this field sees people cycle through because they burn out, right? They don't support themselves. So what we have designed specifically for people in the helping professions is a special session once a month that's open to anyone. And the next one, the one for recovery month, is on Saturday, September 21st. And it's from 10 to 11.30 a.m. And it's free for anyone in the recovery field, a professional who works in the field, um, to learn ways to take care of yourself with nature as your ally in that process. So in 90 minutes with us, we hope, first of all, you're going to enjoy it and have fun, because that's our first goal mm -hmm. with NatureWorks, is to make it enjoyable, because we want people to go outside more. And, and they're it, not going to put you in the field of poison ivy, Sean, just so that you I promise we won't do that. <laughs> um, so you're going to have fun, you're going to enjoy it, and you're going to learn ways that you can take care of yourself to be a better professional, a better person, a better spouse, all of the above, um, with nature as the center point for that. So... We are really excited about what we're doing to help others in the field and also what we're doing to help patients because we also provide direct services to patients and we've worked with eight different treatment programs in the area and we hope to continue that work. So where, yeah. And where can they, where, where is it on the 21st? Oh, so yeah, the location, that's kind of important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It's at Harford Glen Environmental oh, Education yes. Center, which is at 502 West Wheel Road. It's really close to the Festival of Bel Air, believe it or not, but when you go back there, you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So it's a great place to do nature works. It's convenient, but it's also very secluded. Um, you can sign up for it at our website, natureworks.org, and that's N-A-T-U-R-E-W-O-R-X.org. It's also on our Facebook page, our NatureWorks Facebook page. It's free. Bring a spouse or friend if you'd like, um, and it's every third Saturday of the month. September is specifically for people in the recovery field. Is it at Hartford Glen every month? It is. Really? Yeah. How did you strike that? Because isn't that part of Hartford County Public Schools now? So we only go until they close it down on the weekends, which is November. In November, okay. we're going to find another location. But it's open every weekend until November okay. to the public. Now, in the summer, it's open seven days a week to the public. And okay. do you have School's to sign up session. or do you just go? Show you up? have to sign up. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's on, our, on our website and our uh, Facebook page. You can sign up. Okay. But it's free of charge. <laughs> okay. And I, like, just love this because, like, obviously self-care. I've, I've worked in the field. Elliot's worked in the field. When I mean, I think we've all worked in this field for a long time. And, like, yeah. in order to stay in the field, you have to take good, good self-care. Mm -hmm. And I love nature, so yeah. I, like, love yeah. that. But, like, yeah. also, like, nationally, mm -hmm. you are getting recognized right now. Yeah, I mean, our work <laughs> in the recovery field, we had a professor from the University of Maryland study our work and, and look at our survey results. And she published a paper that ended up being accepted to two different conferences this year. One in D.C. in January, and then just this past two weeks ago in Stockholm, Sweden. So awesome. We went wow. To Sweden wow. To present so an awesome. International <laughs> conference. So, so what, can you just give super. like a little example? Like just give me like a little mini workshop, what it would look like. So what a nature work session entails. Yeah, exactly. So we always start off in a sharing circle, and we check in with ourselves to see how we're feeling physically and emotionally. And then from there, we start to use different experiential activities to tap into nature using all of our senses. So we do something called a five senses meditation, where you're invited to be still and use each one of your senses individually to experience what you're hearing, feeling, smelling, sensing. So we're, we're getting into our body sensory input and getting out of the thinking processing part of our minds so we're really resetting our emotional state 
and, <laughs> and giving our mind a true rest, which is really hard to do. Mm-hmm. So we'll start out in the sharing circle, and then we'll do things, for example, we'll go to a creek and invite everyone to pick up a leaf mm-hmm. from the ground, right? And do a visualization exercise where they're placing a problem that they're worried about on that leaf. A relationship, something they're worried about, family problem. Put it on the leaf. Now step over to the creek and take your leaf with your problem, place it in the creek, and let it flow away and wash away until it's out of sight. So that process of letting go using the leaf is manifesting the actual process of letting go. And for many people, it's really helpful to have mm-hmm. that physical process mm-hmm. help them guide them through that letting go, right? That's just one example. We have 75 other experiences that we've curated over our time that invite people to use their senses, get involved with nature. We, we make friends with a tree. So we ask people to find a tree that they're interested in, they find interesting, and to stand by that tree and get to know it using all of their senses and then to actually talk to the tree and share something with the tree that they're looking for insight on because trees are much older and wiser than human beings. So another example of getting involved, using nature in a different way than many people have actually experienced. And and we like to see what often happens is a light bulb goes off and you see that people are really getting it and they really enjoy it and you have a really good feeling they're going to carry that with them in Mm -hmm. in their journey, in their recovery because you see it sort of happen in front of you where they they suddenly get more relaxed. You see their face soften. Uh, they start talking maybe a little bit more than they were. Maybe they were shut down in the beginning. And nature has opened things up for them. Hmm. Can I can I ask you a couple more questions? Sure, Just please. I, yes. Yeah. <laughs> because I mean, this is new for me. I mean, yeah. I haven't. I mean, I I have heard of you guys, but I didn't really understand. So, how long yeah. have you been with Nature Works? So, I founded the organization oh, in okay, 2017. Okay, that was my next question. Yeah, 20, right. in 2017. Okay. Um, and we we've worked with 4,000 people to date that have taken our program. Um, and they are not just people in recovery. We, we work with the general public as well. The first Saturday of the month is a session that's open free to anybody. So if anyone who's listening who's curious about trying a nature work experience, the first Saturday of the month is also free. Okay. We do that as part that's of our awesome. mission. We think nature should be accessible to everyone and not put any barriers of entry into it. And how did you it. come up with this? So I've always loved nature myself. I always felt more alive when I was out there, but I never really understood why that was. So when I was having a mid-career crisis and trying to figure out what I wanted to do with the rest of my life, I started diving into that. Why did I feel better in nature? And I realized there's a huge body of evidence that actually supports um, the theory that human beings thrive when they're outdoors, Mm -hmm. and they they just have been disconnected from outdoors with our emphasis on indoor technology-driven activities. So when I started to read the science behind it, a light bulb went off, and I said, I need to help people connect with this. And I started to talk to people who have a lot of experience in the counseling field, the education field, the environmental ed field, and I kind of put the pieces together, and we, we launched it. And we, we you know, did a pilot program um, that actually worked really well, and that led to us growing. It's awesome. We've got a store around now, yeah. Uh, since, Har- since Harford County Public Schools owns Harford Glen, <laughs> Right. Huh? You're well, stuck no, on this? No, no, I had him on the podcast before, oh. and, and, and yeah. believe me, when I go outside now, I learned to enjoy nature a lot more. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I don't know if I told no, you. You were on before this. Okay. So I was out. I'll get back to my thing. Okay. I was out back in my backyard, and yeah. I kept seeing. I thought it was a bumblebee at first, flying around a butterfly bush. And I got closer, and it was one of those hummingbird moths. Oh wow! One of my best days because it let me actually pet it. Wow. wow! I was like, wait a what? Yeah, that's cool. I was like, oh, that's really cool. Hummingbirds won't come around me. But that hummingbird moth, yeah. So you felt like, really connected to that moth in I, that moment, oh, right? Oh, man, it was wild. And that was probably all you were thinking about in that experience with yeah. that, yeah, yeah. that incident. That's what we try to make happen for people, those moments like that, where oh. people see or, or smell or hear something, and they really connect with that. So we, we try to create really the space for that to happen. When you were talking about the workshops, it just kind yeah. of dawned on me. I'm going to self-disclose a little bit. Yeah. Um, like, I tried, I've tried, like, several different therapies. I'm in recovery myself, so, like, mm. I tried EMDR. I had really bad experiences with that, which I've heard people have great experiences with. But my counselor, actually, at one point, um, I've been with her for, like, 10 years. But at one point, I remember her taking me outside, and, like, we did, like, some of those exercises yeah. where, like, she was, like, notice what's around you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, like, I didn't even think about that. I enjoy nature. I hike a lot. I go kayaking. Mm-hmm. I garden. I have poison mm-hmm. ivy right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're really connected. Yeah. Well, she, she, she really wanted to connect with that poison ivy. It looks so pretty. She had an experience. But I didn't even realize that she did that like. with me. Yeah. I didn't even yeah. realize. 
recognize it. Wow. I can't name drop her because she gets mad at me when I tell people all the time, <laughs> yeah. like because she can't talk about it that I'm her client. Right, right, right. She's right, like, right, name dropping me. Right, right, right. <laughs> gotcha. That's cool. But, so glad what is? To hear that. Can, can I ask your mission statement? Yeah. So our mission is to help people learn ways to connect with nature using all of their senses to improve their mental and physical health. Okay. That's yeah. awesome. I love yeah. that. And that, that is just perfect for Recovery Month. So we, we appreciate you being a part of that. Oh, because you. you what you're doing on the 20th is something that you also do within the recovery community mm -hmm. and treatment centers and, and that kind of stuff. And I, I think exactly. I did talk to your, your coworker and I told her that I would love for them, you guys to come in or have one for our ladies at our houses. So we would love to work yes. with everybody here at the yes. table. If we can support what you're doing and support your staff and your clients, that would be part of our mission. So yeah, yeah. great. That'd be great. we to seat this up. <laughs> I want to get back to my question about the you schools, can, yeah. especially oh. being at Hartford Glen, because if yeah. they're not doing it, then they're missing out. I think was it. Um, I guess it's probably just in the spring and the fall where they send classes there. The school does. Yes. Do you actually do anything with the school system? We want to, God, and you, we're uh, still talking with them. The, okay. the thing we're working through is that camp you're talking about for students at Hartford County Schools mm -hmm. is mostly science-based right now. Mm -hmm. They're learning about species and climate right. change and environmental ed. We'd love to work with them and infuse more of a personal nature connection module to what they do. And it would help with their mental so, health big yeah. time. Well, it's funny that so you say that. So we're working on that conversation. Right, That's a great idea. A long time ago, when I was in elementary school, which was yeah. a long time ago, yeah. um, <laughs> in, Baltimore, <laughs> in Baltimore, I, I went to Baltimore County, we actually had a science teacher. And he had his own classroom. Mm -hmm. And instead of like getting taught science, we mm -hmm. like everybody in the school would have a, a day, you know, let's say Thursday or whatever day that you would go to science class. Mm -hmm. And he would actually take us outside right. and we would do all kinds of stuff. Um, and that was probably one of the most memorable experiences that I can, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like look back at in wow. elementary mm -hmm. school. Yeah. I mean, we had like, we would go out into the field and they would do that like, um, what travels faster, sound or, or light, and right. we would stand like it, it was amazing. But we also went out there one time, and there we all got stung by bees. Oh, yeah. but, <laughs> there's but a risk. I'm just saying, it's like, a, but they don't do that now. Like, so now you have your science and your biology and all of these things. But back then, that was a really he would have a turtle in his office, you know, in his in his classroom and stuff like that. And I just feel like it's so healthy, and we've come so far from that. Oh, he made yeah. it experiential, you figure, right? Yeah. Your teacher got yeah. you outside. You experienced yeah. it firsthand. Yeah, that's very important, I think, too. And about adolescents, I know you're going to the Ashley Clubhouse to work with them, and yes. there's an adolescent, so that's really mm, good. Yeah. And, um, yeah. yeah personally, absolutely. a soft spot for me. Yeah, I was yeah. going to hype that up, too, because, like, that's the thing is, so I moved to Florida for a little bit of my recovery and then moved back because, uh, like Sean was saying, like, Harford County is the home of my recovery, therefore mm -hmm. it's always going to be my home, you know what I mean? Um, so so when I came back, they weren't doing much in the schools. Ashley had just kind of opened the clubhouse. Ashley's getting involved in the schools more using the clubhouse. That might be a great way into doing some of the nature work stuff yeah. with the He's schools. He's going there, actually. Cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to one in two weeks, I think, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, yeah. I'm really grateful for... The work Ashley does in the schools, um, mm -hmm. and also because I feel bad, my buddy Mike from Ashley didn't come because he thought he had a meeting with me, but it turns out he's busy anyway. But um, <laughs> so <laughs> I can't come to the meeting today because I have a meeting with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I texted him this morning. He was like, "Interesting," because but he was like, "I'm busy anyway." So I think you remembered all. Yeah. yeah, he was gonna yeah. bail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sean reminded me. That this is, <laughs> I, you know, ever since I had the baby, I, maybe even before I. I uh, <laughs> struggle remembering everything I said I was going I to do. Yeah, when that baby That's gets just, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just don't forget the baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Enjoy yeah. that hair on top of your head now. <laughs> <laughs> well, as, as always, it's a pleasure. And, you know, I really just love that everybody can get together and talk about recovery and we thank rich for always being a, a big part of you know the recovery community with allowing rage talk and uh we we didn't forget but we saved it for last uh there's another event yeah i want to put this out there because this is obviously a very um a program that i have a lot of connection to um and i forgot to mention it in the in the group but wanted to put it out here so homecoming um has a gala each mm. september that's going to be september 12th and that will be at the Water's Edge 
convention center, I guess it's yeah. technically called. Rogers Edge Event Center. Event yeah. Center. So um, that's a big event. Um, and, and want to explain a little bit about what Homecoming is? Yeah, so Homecoming is a longstanding, I believe they classify themselves as Halfway House, um, and they are gender specific. And I was, you know, kind of thinking of when Elliot shared that information about gender specific, I am an alumni of Homecoming, and I really, really struggled coming in just um, in a lot of ways women do and that gender specific program was really beneficial for me and um, it's a year-long program if not more um, they have case management um, and a lot of in-house um, services like therapy and um, big book studies um, and groups and meetings they go out to meetings so yeah it's just a really good program and they have their big fundraiser september 12th the homecoming gala and so it's a fancier event it's a good time right yeah, yeah. so we have a, a really nice you know variety for anybody that wants to kind of get to know the recovery community or support the recovery community you can do it anything from just putting lights at your house or you could attend any of these events obviously they're all open to the public you know you just go to the websites purchase tickets show up and I think that you're going to be pleasantly surprised because I know that there's a stigma um, to you know addiction and people just don't understand that recovery is possible and we want to prove you wrong I love it when I hear you don't look like an addict oh yeah I hear it all the time <laughs> like what does that mean yeah I know <laughs> I know and yeah. and the stigma is so real you know like <laughs> I think for a while I was in a bubble in recovery where the only people I talked to were other people in recovery and stuff like that. And the more I got into the professional world, the yeah. more I felt the blowback of That's the local community um, really kind of dismissing or talking bad about people in recovery mm -hmm. or treatment centers or sober livings or whatever it is. And um, I think about this concept a lot. And I don't blame the general public for thinking no, some of these it. things, yeah. but the truth is when it starts to affect your family or someone you know who you didn't think it was possible for them to experience this stuff, that kind of opens your mind a little bit more. Um, there was like something on Facebook this week where they were starting to talk about a local treatment center uh, and they said some pretty gnarly stuff. And I watched the community jump in there to explain what it was. And the person who posted it eventually deleted it, deleted um, it. which Good. satisfied me to a degree. But, um, <laughs> like, you see this stuff all the time. I mean, when we first opened, people were putting, like... There was a petition, actually. Yeah, yeah, and people were putting cones in our parking spaces and all kinds of stuff to try to stop us from doing things. And, um, yeah. I will say that, like, I was saying the positive note, like, those, those people that you don't want to access that care, like, for example, me and Elliot, like, I own a house in Bel Air, yeah. and I am a taxpayer, and, like, so, um, yeah, just try to, like... You know, remind yourself when you're thinking these things to do a little bit more digging and that um, we become really active members of society yeah. and productive. And then also, like, people, like, when you say those things, you might not know who you're talking to. And that might that person might have lost their loved one. Right. And, well, <laughs> well, that's that's very relevant because, I mean, my connection with the recovery community isn't because I'm in recovery. It's because I lost my daughter. Exactly. And the experience that I had with that, which was a, a, a very difficult, long-running, mm -hmm. you know, experience in my life and I never got to see her on the other side and this yeah. is I'm gonna cry no, but like these guys are like everything to me mm -hmm. because like it's a big deal when you lose somebody but you can see that if they have the right resources I don't know what's wrong with me I no, always you're cry fine. I you're always fine. freaking cry but like but they do yeah. and this is what's happening here today and maybe if this would have been available there wouldn't be so many people that we have lost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the good thing is we're talking about Sorry. it now. We're talking about it now so more people are hearing about it. And I guarantee you, those people that are against the recovery homes and all this, I guarantee you, they know somebody that's in addiction. For sure. Or that has been in addiction. 
And they've been negatively affected by it, and they're thinking before they speak. Exactly. Some of them may have lost somebody to addiction, and and they may think, oh, it doesn't help. Well, that was years ago. Harford County didn't have all the resources then. The country didn't have all the resources it did then. And now we do, and it's helping. And excuse me for saying this, people need to get their heads out of their asses and realize (laughs) this is a benefit to the communities. What the hell was that? That was a sensor. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) my world! We're not a long walk, (laughs) right? Sorry, he's trying to bring it back around here. Well, yeah, I I just when I hear about that stuff, because remember, I I saw—I don't think it was the same post, but another post. That stuff just pisses me off. Because I try not to get bothered by it because, like, I feel like I don't want to like you know, resort to, like, that same kind of negative energy. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, I mean, I just try to educate people, and I think that's what we're doing here. Yeah, Yeah. and also, I just, I want to say this, because I say this a lot. People in recovery have worked on themselves mm-hmm. more than any other people in the in, in our population. Yeah, I would have never said what I just said before my first no, got sober. No, but I'm saying, <laughs> like, like, when, ah. when you can do the work on yourself, yeah. that's where growth comes in, and not your average, you know, neighbor or, you know, there's people that don't do that internal work and, yeah. you know, have the resources, you know, if someone teaching you about nature or treatment and all of these things, it makes a big difference, mm-hmm. and, and they're, they're amazing humans beings and i'm and i'm always gonna gonna love all of you always and we love you and <laughs> and it reminds me too like i was at a government meeting about the opioid restitution fund mm. right that's coming through and somebody said who even knows their neighbors anymore and i was like i know every single one of my neighbors and they know me and they I know, know my, my dog <laughs> and the kids that are outside pet my dog and run up to my dog and they'll come knock on my door just to pet my dog they know my son's name you know what i mean like they know everything like and i'm a person in recovery and i get to know the people around me now because i understand that everybody might be struggling with something so why not be nice? Mm-hmm. And that's very much a byproduct of being a person in recovery who has been loved and supported by people I did not know and knowing that I have to be an active part of my local community. Like, And that's the thing. And that's what causes closed-mindedness in a community, not being an active part of your actual yes. community, yes. right? Yes. Like, so, mm-hmm. so communities, It's all connected. Yeah, it's As not... nature works to probably teach you. It's about connection. <laughs> it's about connection. <laughs> so it's not just important for people in recovery to be connected to their community. It's important for the community at large to be connected mm-hmm. to everybody around them so they get to know what's actually going on and who's actually impacted by the thing that might offend them or whatever it is, you know? Um, and I, and oh, well, no. Yeah, and that's what I hope to instill in my son. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I want him to know, hey, when I go outside, there's a reason, like my dad's saying hi to everybody, and there's a reason when we go to the grocery store, people are coming up giving him hugs and stuff, you know what I mean? And when we go to church, people stay in the line to, like, talk to me, you know what I mean? Oh, my Yeah. And I know. I love attention, too. But <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I do love attention. My fiancé will tell you, like, how much I love it, so. Well, so we're, you know, what we'll, we'll take away from this today is that you know we can start with hugging a tree and then we're gonna not Sean sure. and then we're gonna and, and this in, in September not hug you not hug you in September oh. come to these events and you're gonna see how the recovery community comes together so you can hug someone in recovery mm. but not me currently because no, I have poison no, ivy well hopefully you'll be healed up by then unless you really like the poison ivy I garden a lot that's how I keep getting poison ivy <laughs> So I can get my neighbor's vegetables. Thank you. Stop growing poison ivy. (laughs) I want to thank my guests for coming on this episode, but I really want to thank you for listening. And I would really appreciate it if you left a review about the show or about this episode. And you can actually do that right from the website. Go to conversationswithrichbennett.com. You can leave a comment about this episode. You can leave a review for the podcast in general. Another thing I would love for you to do, of course, follow us on social media, but send me a voicemail. If there is somebody you want me to get on the show, if you want to come on the show, if there is something you would like for us to discuss, send a voicemail or send an email. If you send a voicemail, if you want, I can actually play it back on the show too. So just saying, Uh, but no, seriously, I, I want to thank you for listening because if it wasn't for you, 
the podcast wouldn't be as successful as it is. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. So I am sitting here today. I have a young lady on that is a very talented photographer, Emily Adolph. And she's got something very special, especially if you run a nonprofit. Oh, she's got something special for you. But if you just need photography in general, you want to get a hold of her. So how are you doing, Emily? I'm doing good, Rich. Thank you for having me on today. Oh, my pleasure. Tell us what it is that you are, this special that you're running. Yeah. so Special from, for special people because you're special, right? <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So what I'm offering is free photography services to nonprofits here in Harford County. And mm-hmm. um, initially I was running it from now until the end of June, but what I've decided to do is extend it out. Um, so now I'm right. offering it from now until um, the end of August. So until August 31st, that, that, you know, weekend. Um, figured, you know, it's a, it's a busy time of year season for mm-hmm. you know, nonprofits having events in the summertime. Um, but yeah, really just want to support, help nonprofits capture, you know, moments and, and the, um, experiences of the events that they're hosting without having to, you know, worry about funding the photographer. Right. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit about, you know, what I'm, I'm giving back to the community. Which is great because a lot of your nonprofits don't take photos of their events yeah. and they should be on their websites. I agree. You I know, agree. even for upcoming events, you know, it's nice if you had the photos from last year to, to ask, Hey, look, this is what we're doing. This is how good it is. Yeah. And also, but you also do other types of photography in case somebody wants to hire you, right? I do. Yeah, I do portraits, families, event, you know, other events, musicians, bands. Those are my my key focuses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how does somebody hire you? How do they get in touch with you? Yeah, they would just go to my website. So it's www.emilyadolf.com. So that's E M I L Y A D O L P H dot com. Well, first of all, thank you for doing that because that's awesome. Thank and you. especially now, for, a lot of your nonprofits are struggling yeah. because you're just like all of us, inflation's hitting them hard. Yep. You know, and you have, you know, some venues around that shut down. So some of them are struggling to find a place. And yep. here you are reaching out to help. And for those of you that don't know about Emily, this is, Emily just loves to help people out. Yeah, I do. So. Help her out as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, hire her for your photography. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. Thanks, Rich.